Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. All you have to do is look at San Francisco and look at that beautiful young woman who was killed in her father's arms, and you say, if they didn't have this, it wouldn't happen. And beyond that, he should have never been in the country anyway. Mexico, in my opinion, the government of Mexico forced him out. We're allowing it because we have stupid leaders. We have a stupid group of people at the top. That girl should be alive. It is Rock and Roll Friday on the Savage Nation. Yours truly at the helm. Michael Savage at the wheel. You know that uh, line in that Al Pacino movie, uh, Carlito's Way, where he gets in a gunfight in a pool room, and then he retreats to a bathroom, and he realizes his pistol's out of bullets. But he doesn't know all the guys are dead, and he wants to come out of the bathroom. So he cocks the gun, even though he knows it's empty, and he screams out, Robert, play it. Here come the pain! <laughs> That's how I feel on the Savage Nation. I feel like Al Pacino on the uh, in that movie, Carlito's Way, going on the microphone, because I'll tell you the truth. We are in a gunfight and we're losing. The radical communist left has taken over the entire world. Now, I don't mean the old Bolshevik days where they lined people up and shot them quite yet. Notice the quite yet. No, it's a quiet Bolshevik revolution that Barry from Hawaii has been conducting. And the secret hands that run the world, who selected him twice now, controlling the voting, by the way, as uh, Joseph Stalin said, I don't care who counts. The, he says, I don't care who votes. I care who counts the votes. And you know who counts your votes, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're not counted in America. They're counted by a shadowy group in Europe that has some kind of computer program. If you can believe it, but it's true. Check it out. Then they picked the first non-European pope in 1200 years who is, if he, if he was wearing a red beret, he would be no different than Che Guevara in his, in his rhetoric. But he, again, they're so clever, the communists, that they do it now in a different way, not yelling, not screaming, no hammer and sickle. They do it quietly. They're very good at salesmanship, the commies. So when a true conservative stands up like Trump, who really says what is apparently the truth. He never said all immigrants are criminals. He never said all Mexicans are criminals. Never. He never said that. He, you know what he said? The verminous communist left, instead of attacking ISIS for kidnapping, murdering, raping, selling young girls into slavery, they attack him. Instead of attacking the black flag of ISIS, the cowards in the Democrat Party and their media friends attack the Confederate flag. The cowards at the New York Times refused to list uh, Ted Cruz's book as a bestseller, even though it is, just as they did to me in Countdown to Mecca. I was shocked to see that article from Politico by uh, Dylan Byers. They said they, uh, although the uh, Ted Cruz's new book came out and it's outsold many other books, they would not list it. And they gave a twisted reason why at the New York Times. They alleged that many of his books were bought by groups, which is utter nonsense. My book, Countdown to Mecca, beat three other titles in total sales, and they would not list that book. Of course, it didn't make it to Politico, my book. It didn't make it to the Drudge Report. But you can still take a look at Countdown to Mecca on michaelsavage.com and check it out in a bookstore. It's a savage book. I want to go to my website, michaelsavage.com, take a look at the headline stories that I found worthy of publication. Vatican says the communist crucifix is a sign of dialogue, not ideology. See, he went to meet the Bolivian president who was an avowed commie. And of course, the Pope comes from a commie background. And the Pope was shocked, don't you know, shocked that he was given a crucifix in the form of a hammer and sickle. I don't know what it's going to take for you Catholic people to wake, wake up to the fact that your church has been infiltrated and has overturned the whole meaning of religion. It is now a political organization with religious trappings. Article number two, Big Pharma smearing fish oil. I did a big article on that a while ago, and my main point was that there's a war against all non-prescription supplements by big pharmaceuticals who do not want you to treat yourself 
uh, less expensively and perhaps less dangerously than with prescription drugs. Now, having said that, prescription drugs can be life-saving. We know that I've used them. I've used them, and I have used them my whole life. They've saved me. But I don't overuse them, and I rarely use them. Instead, I live on vitamins and, and minerals and herbs and stuff like that and homeopathic remedies. And they work like a charm. They're inexpensive, and they're safer. On michaelsavage.com, top left, bottom left, TSL top 25 streaming talk shows, Michael Savage with a 25 share, Rush Limbaugh 12 share, Laura Ingram 6 share, Glenn Beck 5 share, Sean Hannity 3.7 share, etc. And that tells you something. I don't look for the millennials. I listen to talk show hosts always pandering to millennials. I don't know why. The first rule of business is don't pander to the audience you want because then they're going to turn you off. The reason young people listen to my show more than any other talk radio show, and the reason I say that is because they listen on devices such as the the phones the android etc and so i have the largest share so who is using those androids mainly younger people older folks listen to radio stations we that's a well-known fact so why are young people listening to me what am i saying that they find compelling i don't know i think it's called the truth i think it's as simple as that the unvarnished truth has a way to it as ernest hemingway wrote the truth has a certain ring to it you just know when it's true it's that simple. Poll shows President Trump may not be so far-fetched. New York Post. Here are the winning essays in the Savage Scholarship Contest. If you want to see them, what it means to be an American and take some hope, go ahead, make my day. Here's a sad, heartbreaking story that I was reluctant to report, but I have to report it. A woman, 30 years old, was walking on Sunset Boulevard with her boyfriend, she was a waitress, a bartender, and she dreamed of becoming an actress and a writer in Hollywood. 30 years old, walking on Sunset Boulevard with a boyfriend when she was executed by an unknown assailant with a shotgun blast to the back of her head. Her name is Carrie Jean Melvin. Her boyfriend was not shot. No one else was shot. Melvin and her boyfriend, both originally from Central California, was strolling along McCadden Place near Sunset Boulevard 10 p.m. Sunday, when a man, described by police as African-American and in his mid-20s, walked up behind Melvin and shot her once in the head before jumping into the driver's seat of a dark sedan. She was pronounced dead at the scene. There was no conversation before, during, or after the shooting, said Detective John Swags of the LAPD. The murder appeared to be random, said Swags. Although the targets, the killer's target was clear, there was no attempted robbery, and Melvin's boyfriend, whose name has not been released, was unharmed. Does anyone have any idea why a thing like this would happen? Here is another young white woman gunned down in the streets of California. And the national media is focused on the Confederate flag. 855-407-2828 on the left of michaelsavage.com. Here's a great story. An actor turned anti-ISIS fighter, Michael Enright, says, I don't care about being famous. He left Hollywood, and he's joined the men and women of the Kurds to fight the vermin in ISIS. He's a minor actor. He was in the Pirates of the Caribbean and Old Dogs, Cold Case. He got so incensed by the merciless killings by these vermin throwbacks of ISIS, he left L.A., went to Syria, where he knows no one, and he's joined the Kurdish fighting force. He sleeps in bombed-out homes in over 100-degree heat without so much as a fan. He kicks down doors and stands in the line of enemy fire, all in an effort to eradicate these subhumans, the brutal terrorist group known as ISIS. Now there's a movie for you, Katzenberg. Now there's a movie for you, Ratzenberg. Why, there's a movie for you, Spielberg. Why don't you book Michael Enright and make him a hero instead of one of your fake men with all the beards you use in the movies to make them look like real men. Let's move down the page on michaelsavage.com because I have other stories I don't think you've seen anywhere else. Let's see what is a good one for you. Uh, Oregon allowing 15-year-olds to get state-subsidized sex change operations. All right, we covered that yesterday. Nearly $3 billion have been spent by Barry from Oahu on largely failed fight against ISIS. He has no idea how to defeat them. He refuses to attack them in their strongholds.
but there's plenty of money for the government military complex. Yep. Meanwhile, the San Francisco supervisors defend the ordinance of a sanctuary city in wake of the killing of that young woman. What else is on michaelsavage.com? There's a lot on the website, and I have a lot more in stories and whatnot. And the phone number is 855-400-7282. And as I said to you before, here comes the pain. Here comes the pain! <laughs> I like that line. I just I love Al Pacino in anything. He's a guy who, whatever he does, I've liked him, and even bad comedies. Not really. I never liked him in the comedies. But great actor, wonderful character actor, one of the best. I don't understand one thing. How can an Italian guy from New York be a liberal? It goes for Robert De Niro also. I don't understand it. They're smart enough to make a fortune and win the hearts and minds of the world with their performances and navigating Hollywood as they have their whole lives with the agents and the wolves and the sharks, the jackals and baboons and the spiders and the snakes. They're smart enough to see it all. Michael Savage to Robert De Niro. Michael Savage to Al Pacino. Do you really believe the left-wing garbage that you generally speak, I can't believe it. I truly don't believe you're not such realists that you don't understand the danger you're putting yourself and your family and your nation in. Just a thought. I'll be back. I'm Michael Savage. Here come the pain! Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Maybe I'll just play music all day and say nothing controversial. Then I can become a Republican or a Democrat. I could even run for office. In other words, if I just became a disc jockey, I could become extremely popular. And I might even be able to run for office. Just think I could be another John Boehner or Lindsey Graham. Even a Ted, well, no, Ted's okay. Let's say another Marco Rubio, the ice cream man. Say nothing and just let the party push you to the top like the old Bolshevik system. Be practical, no rage, no intelligence. Say nothing. Just smile a lot. Do it the good old American way. There, I just burned up two minutes without saying anything to get me in hot water. I mean, we're reaching a point in America where everyone is afraid of their own shadow. Everyone in po Look what they did to Trump. Look how merciless the communists are. You say, oh, come on, how could a guy be a co Look at the cowards. So call them cowards. Do you really think that they care that much about murderers and rapists? Do you think they care that much about immigrants? Legal or illegal? It's cowardice, that's all. That's why they're jumping on them. And the worst of the pack are the Republicans themselves who are just scared out of their minds that he's just liable to steal the election from them. My only fear is he'll run as a, a third-party candidate, which would be the end of it. That's the, then if he does that, then I'll feel I was screwed. Because he, he was on my show two weeks ago. I said, Donald, people are afraid you're going to run as a, a Ross Perot. Spoiler, break the vote, and give it to Hillary. Remember he paused about 40 seconds? And then he said, no, I'm not going to run as a third-party candidate. Well, now, uh, new versus in May, you know. Sorry. Sorry. So, look, it's, it's open mic to mic Friday. You know, we can talk about all the topics of the day. I did religion this week. It fell on dead ears. Six religious people liked it. And 97% uh, of the audience turned the show off and listened to Wallbanger, I think. I don't know what people do. You, you can't calculate what people are doing. But if I'm not true to myself, I may as well not do radio. In other words, a part of me is spiritual. So if I occasionally let you see a little bit of my spiritual nature, fine. I have to let you see that part of myself. Otherwise, I'm not giving you enough of myself to, A, to continue in the business in any sincere manner and have you listen for any length of time. Today is a strange day for me because it's Friday, number one, which is not, that's not why it's strange. Normally, I have a very strict routine. I get up about six, let the dog out, and go right back to sleep. I know I thought I was going to do chins, push-ups, have a, a chlorophyll drink. No, what I do is I pull the curtain shut and lock the light out and go right back to sleep. Because I can't start that early. Admittedly, while a dog is outside relieving himself, I go to the computer and look at the emails and news. I can do it in about 50 seconds, 
which means you can do it in 50 seconds, which shows you why talk radio is not necessary to deliver the news unless it's a story that breaks during the show. I mean, you could do it in 50 seconds or less. You could do it while driving in a car. So you're not turning this show on to get news. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but you want my opinion on the news, right? You want my analysis. You want my insights. You want whatever I can give you. You want the human side, someone to talk about it with you, such as an uncle or a father used to do, or maybe still does in some places. But I didn't do that today. Instead of going back to sleep, I waited for the dog groomer to come, and it took forever. She's great. She picks Teddy up every Monday and Friday. I have a toy poodle, and everyone says, my God, yeah, you look great. He gets groomed Monday and Friday. I spend more on hairdos on him than I do on me. That's because he has more hair than I do, but that's second. <laughs> I don't need a hairdo. <laughs> so he gets picked up. I immediately had my bicycle truck. I, I threw it in the back of a SUV I have, which I haven't driven in six months. And I broke my pattern. Instead of bicycling around my neighborhood, which I am so bored of, I can count every, I know every crack in the neighborhood. I know every pebble in the cement. I can't take it anymore. I trucked the bicycle over to a shopping center a couple of miles away. Big deal. It shows you how exciting my life can be. And then I bicycled around. And I just, in my little observations, here's what I observed. I'll show you what you can see. I, I bicycled past the car wash. I saw about 40 illegal aliens standing around. And you know what? I saw nice people trying to make a living. Well, you're going to work in the car wash? You're going to tell me that your, your son or daughter will work in a car wash? No. So I said, open your eyes. Be realistic about the realities of today. That's just the beginning. Then I bicycle past a Ferrari dealer. I mean, I went around and sh just shows you what you could do in, in, a, in a couple of minutes. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. All right, look what you got already in the first half hour of the show. You got the news. You got music. You had a little anecdote on my bike ride, and the show's over. Good night. Have a nice weekend. I'll see you Monday. But no, that's now. <laughs> no, I haven't started the pain yet. Notice that I have danced around the horrendous stories that are out there. They're so bad, your heart could stop. And where shall I begin? I don't know. I'll have to do it slowly. I'll have to do it slowly. The jumping on Trump, it's not new to me. Anyone in talk radio has had it done to them. It's cost me millions of dollars over 20 years. What the advertising agencies have done to me as a result of boycotts based upon statements I really didn't even make. So don't think that it's uh, not, not affected those of us in the media who put ourselves out here every day for America. We do. And we've paid for it. And we keep on going. Because if we stop, who's going to be there for you? Tell me who's going to be there for you. Who? Who? Who's going to give your side of the story? Who's going to be left? I don't know. I don't know who's going to be left when guys like us are not in radio anymore. Who's going to be left when you have pancake made up guys like that one Williams, the phony liar? That's, that's who you get your news from to begin with. Only he got caught. That's all. He got caught, so they threw him out. It was too much for even for, for NBC. I think he was on NBC. I don't even know. Brian Williams is his name? Is that his name? I mix up Williams with the other Williams down the street with the, uh, the rope and the hang. I, I don't know. I mix them up. I can't remember people whose last name is Williams. I, I don't know why. It's too common a last name. I mix them up. In order for me to remember Brian Williams, I have to think of poor guy down my neighbor. Robin Williams with the strap in the garage. I can't. I have associational problems. I have so many data bits in my brain from a lifetime of reading and thinking and looking and watching and speaking that I have my own way of sorting. If I try to remember Brian Williams, I can't. I have to say my last name, then I say Robin Williams. Williams and I, in, in, you know, in a millisecond, I remember it's Brian Williams. But I have to do a backdoor. Do you have your own way of getting at things to remember things? I have a very good memory, superb memory. Okay, what would you like to talk about? WABC, Dan, you're the first one up on the Savage Nation this Friday. Fire away, Dan. Hey, Dr. Savage. How are you? I'm uh, 25 years old. I'm a millennial. and I want to I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear it. I'm sorry to hear you're a millennial. It's a tough thing to be. I know. I think I was born in the wrong time. Um, but I just wanted to say, I think most millennials you know, relate to you because you know, we're not like my parents' generation, you know. We 
kind of, we accept being an American and we don't see race, we don't see gay. You know, me personally, like, my cousin's gay, my uncle's gay. You know, I support, you know, love and happiness. And, you know, I, uh, culture, you know, uh, when we step outside our doors, you know, we should be American. And we should, and we should value the fact that we are just Americans and, and stop drawing all these culture lines. And economically, you know, we don't want the government in our lives. You know, our generation... You know, we don't want our- so. So wait, wait, wait. What you're saying is culturally, you're a social liberal, but you're a fiscal conservative. Is that more or less what you're saying? More or less, yeah. All my generation, when I went to college, you know, all our friends, we all agree on the same thing. We don't care about you know different cultures. We don't care about that. Yeah, okay. I know. I know your position on sexuality. I get that. I myself am a sexual libertarian, which I've said for years. Have you heard me say that? Absolutely. I've been listening to you since I was 16. All right, so no one yes, yet has ripped that off yet. I haven't heard it in, uh, from uh, Rush yet. They haven't written it down for him. Yeah. But and, uh, don't, I, I'm a sexual libertarian because I feel that people will do what they want anyway. It doesn't matter what you say to them. I mean, what's the point of preaching people to people? Secondly, most of the preachers preaching are doing something behind closed doors that they don't want you to know about. So to me, what people do between each other is their business. That's number one. And it's been going on since the beginning of time. But having said that, I know that your liberal, your social liberalism is a product of education. Do you buy the big lie about global warming being caused by man and we all have to, like, change our lives and pay a world tax? Do you believe in the data? Absolutely not. I went to school in Massachusetts where they would try to push that down. If the, if the world, if the Earth was a world clock, a 24-hour clock, humans have only been on this Earth two minutes. So there's no way that, you know, our our existence on this earth had damaged our planet. But on the other So in other words, what you're saying to my audience is very, very encouraging. And, and I kind of hope for that result when I said I have the largest listenership of millennials in talk radio, which is absolutely the truth. You're socially liberal when it comes to sexuality, but you're not buying the big lie. And certainly, I assume you're a Caucasian, correct? I, yes, I am. I'm a white male. I'm sorry to hear it. Were you beaten up with white privilege, the big lie by the uh, goon squads? Oh, absolutely. You know, I uh, I had to feel bad for everywhere I got. You know, when you know I when I had to, when I was up against trying to get into college, when you know my applications were up against, I had two, uh, two minorities get into a couple schools. You know, I got denied from with the same GPA that my friends from the same town got into, just because one was Indian and um, one was actually Asian. You know, it's just you know. I think that our generation- In other words, you f you feel the prejudice of our society against white males. You f you felt that, so maybe that's what has you listening to my show. And I feel it goes the other way because the way I think is that we don't care about race. You know, we just want the best person for the job. You know, we are. Yeah, you may feel that way, but they don't. You don't seem to understand. They're at war with you. You're their target. They'd like to exterminate you from the marketplace and the marketplace of ideas. Remember that. I'll say it again. They want to exterminate young men like you from the marketplace and the marketplace of ideas. And I stand by those words. Every program, every program in every university targets only one gender and one uh, race, and that's white males. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that millennials, is that you have to realize that we do listen to you, Dr. Savage, and you are our voice, and that we don't feel the way that the big lie and that liberals and that and my friends, we're not, you know, we don't, we don't want government control. We don't want communism. We don't want... Where, where do you live? You live in New York City, in Brooklyn? Where do you live? I live, in, I live in Connecticut, at Stanford, Connecticut. You live at home or you live by yourself? I have an apartment with my girlfriend. Oh, God, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> you got the joke, okay. I take it. I take it. <laughs> you see what I mean? So you have a sense of humor, even... <laughs> Even though generations <laughs> separate us, that was quick on the draw on your part. You see, we could we could have a beer together and laugh. That's the main thing. As long as you well, look, I'm an, I'm an, all I can say is I know that young people are looking for someone to speak up for them. And I'm glad you're one of the listeners of the Savage Nation. What do you do that you have the time to listen to my show in the middle of the afternoon? Um, well, I'm, I'm employed. I actually I, I'm in an office of home health, home health care uh, company. Um, called uh, Utopia, and we send what? home health, home health aid to elderly. Well, what do you, you work out of your house? No, I, I, I I'm in an office in Stanford, and uh, we. So wait, so in we, the middle of work, in the middle of the work day, you're listening to me on headphones, and they don't know it. 
Uh, yeah, they don't they don't know us because you know I need to hear Doctor Savage every day because you're the only. All right, don't don't give out the name of your company. I don't want you to get fired. And when I send you my novel, Countdown to Mecca, would you please bring it to work in a plain brown wrapper as though it's pornography? Because anything that is truthful in America today is now considered more vile than pornography is. Pornography has now become mainstream, while the truth has become pornographic, which explains why they're going after Donald Trump. Okay, my friend, that's great. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next caller here. KSFO, we're going to... We're going to ba balance it out. That was New York City. Now we're going to move across the country to my hometown of, I'm going to try to say it correctly, San Francisco. I did it. You see, I didn't say San Francisco. I didn't say San Francisco. San Francisco, KSFO. David, line two. Topic, please. Hey, Michael, I have a theory about why that white woman was uh, gunned down in Los Angeles. No, I don't watch anything by, uh, frankly, I, I don't watch that kind of stuff. Let's put it to you that way. Okay, well, in this video, she kidnaps a wealthy white woman and tortures her to death. And there's nudity in it, and she's covered with blood at the end. And Wow, has she been invited to the White House by Michelle Obama to put on a private performance? Not yet, but what the is that? Is it suddenly in vogue to be killing white people? Is this the new knockout game to just uh, gun them down in the streets? I don't know. I, but you heard the story. You, I bet you didn't read that story or hear about it anywhere, did you? Uh, no, no, I heard it from you first. But Well, I was scanning the news last night. I uh, was up late, and I found it on foxnews.com. White woman strolling, Sunset Boulevard, 30 years old. Male jumps out of car, shoots her in the back of the head with a shotgun, jumps back in the car. Did not rob her, did not shoot the boyfriend. So you ask yourself, what is this about? The first thought I had was it was an, assa you know, uh, uh, an assassination. But she was a waitress and a bartender. She wasn't you know, a high roller of any kind. Well, who would do that to her? Gang initiation as well. I just want to say one more thing really quickly. So there, I'm looking at this article right now that says that Rihanna's video where she kills a white woman is not an insult to feminism. It's a step forward. Yeah, well, who wrote that? Oh. Who wrote Donna Shalala? Donna Shalala wrote the jacket copy? I mean, who wrote that? These are, this is an, uh, a website that features articles that are trendy. Well, she's an artist. You, you don't want to quelch freedom of expression, do you? Uh, you, you don't want to be living in a, in a, in a, in a fascist dictatorship? I mean, if this uh, gutter snipe, this gutter rat, whatever she is, whatever her name is, produces a video showing the random murder of white women, that's an artistic expression of the times. And I suppose she's an oppressed minority with a collective, with a collective memory of uh, all sorts of horrible things done to her ancestors, and she's simply expressing herself culturally. That's, you see, David, you're not seeing it properly. She doesn't really want anyone to go out and kidnap and torture and kill white women. She's just an artist. You get the picture, David. You know how it works, don't you? Whereas if Donald Trump says one word that's close to the truth, he's not an artist. He's Adolf Hitler. All right, so we're in a culture war. We know that. David, do you still read books? Yes, I do. I have 12 copies of Countdown to Mecca left to give away this week, and that's it. You're getting one of them. I just checked my entire inventory of complimentary copies that I give away on air is out. I have 12 left, would you believe it? So 12 lucky winners will get the book this week, and that's the end of it. And then if you want to buy it, you'll buy it. You won't hear much about it from me unless I read from it once in a while. And that's the end of that story. 855-400-7282. Let's take another, uh, another caller or two. You know, this killing in L.A., by the way, seems to have attracted a lot of calls. Morris on WABC, go ahead, please. You're calling about the white woman gunned down by an unknown black man in the streets of L.A. last uh, the other night. What's your what's your uh, take on this? My take on it is, Michael, is that it's the M.O. sounds very much like the zebra killings of the 1970s that were conducted by the death angels of the Nation of Islam. And it, it never stopped. What do you think about that, Michael? You do remember it. You're like cold screener. When I said zebra murders, well, he says... Well, wait, wait, wait. But you've just lumped the zebra murders in with the Nation of Islam. I didn't know that the zebra murders were conducted by the Nation of Islam. Where, where's, where's the connection here? 
Well, have you ever read the book by Clark Howard called The Zebra Murders? I, I can't believe that you are, are not. I, no, 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 hold on. Hold on now. Just educate us. Who was the zebra killer? Okay. The zebra killers were a bunch of black Muslims who had a point system in order to, like, achieve their death wings. The highest points were white children, the second highest were white women, and the third were white males. Kind of the reverse of what it is now, isn't it? But you never heard of the zebra murders, Michael? I mean, it's... I, di I said to you I did, but I didn't know there was a connection, nor do I know to this minute that you're telling me the truth. I don't know that there is a connection to the nation of Islam. I'm sorry? All right, I think I'm going to let this go because I think I'm being led into a quagmire and I don't have my glasses on right now. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. The whole nation knows that a young white woman was killed by an illegal alien from Mexico about 10 days ago in the middle of the day, uh, call it on the wharf in San Francisco near the ferry terminal. That set off a shockwave calling for the end to sanctuary cities and exemplified the madness of liberalism. Last night, though, the story came out of L.A. 30-year-old California woman wanted to be an actress and a writer walking with a boyfriend, worked as a waitress and bartender, executed on Sunset Boulevard by an unknown assailant with a shotgun blast to the back of her head. Boyfriend not shot, no one robbed. Sunday, a man described by police as African-American in his mid-20s walked up behind her and shot her once in the head before jumping into the driver's seat of a dark sedan. She was pronounced dead at the scene, obviously. No conversation before, during, or after the shooting, according to Detective John Swaggs. Murder appeared to be random. No robbery. Melvin's boyfriend, unharmed. Why? What's going on? So a guy calls in the last segment, and he says it reminded him of the zebra murders, which, frankly, I never remember. I remember the name. And he said that they were conducted by a group of black male Muslims, and I just checked Wikipedia, who says the same thing. They called themselves the Death Angels, and they committed at least 16 murders and eight attempted murders. Some authorities believe they may have killed as many as 80 or more victims. The police named the case Zebra after the special police radio band they assigned for the investigation. Four black men were convicted of the crimes, mostly against white victims. I didn't know that. I, I really didn't study it that, cl that closely. It was back in 73, 74. I lived in San Francisco from 74 on. I had no idea. So that was a racially motivated murder. Why? I have no idea. They were trying to set off, what, like uh, a race war? Anyway, that's what went on then. That's what went on then. So what's going on now? Why are two white women dead in a span of less than two weeks? Almost randomly killed. What, what's going on here? Who's killing them and why? Is there a pattern? Are they just chance accidents? Well, I know. You should focus on the Confederate flag. And Donald Trump, that's the real problem, not ISIS. Don't focus on the ISIS flag. Don't focus on the ongoing slavery of eight-year-old girls in the Middle East. That would be too uncomfortable for you, wouldn't it? Talk about slavery 150 years ago. That makes sense, doesn't it? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is six minutes after the hour. This is the Savage Nation. Thanks for listening. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Good night. No, it's just beginning hour number two. Don't be shocked. So now we move on 
to the constant agitation by the president and the first lady. She gave a speech to young American Indians. I guess they're called Native Americans. I'm afraid to say the wrong word. Amerins, Amerins, Native Americans, tribal youth, where she agitates minority youth with the following speech in clip four. Let's listen. Before the United States was even an idea, your ancestors were harvesting the crops that would feed the world for centuries to come. Your artwork uh -huh. has inspired generations of artists. Your healing techniques have spurred great medical advances and saved countless lives. And today on issues like conservation and climate change, we are finally beginning to embrace the wisdom of your ancestors. Why is Michelle Obama agitating minority youth around the world? She went to London, she went to a Muslim girls' school, and she said, you look like me, I look like you. She told them how wonderful they were. Wherever she goes, she seems to be agitating. I can see inspiring minority youth who have low self-esteem, I suppose, but it's one thing to inspire people with the truth. It's another thing to agitate them into anger. Listen to clip five and tell me if you think this is appropriate for First Lady. Five. As we all know, America hasn't always treated your people and your heritage with dignity and respect. Ooh. Tragically, it's been just the opposite. Oh my God. Your traditions were systematically targeted for destruction. Can you believe your this? Your people were forced to relocate far from the lands they lived on for generations. Holy Young people God. just like you were sent to boarding schools designed to strip them of their language, culture, and history. Well, listen to this. This is the first lady of the United States who's speaking just like a left-wing college professor trying to agitate minority youth against white people. And notice that she's talking about the Native Americans' language, culture, and history. God, if she only cared about America's borders, language, and culture. Then I would call her a first lady. She's the first agitator. Listen to clip six. Listen. Your religions and ceremonies were outlawed by so-called civilization regulations. Why regulations that literally made your cultures illegal. You mean like you're doing? And while that kind of blatant discrimination is thankfully far behind us, you all are still seeing the consequences of those actions every single day in your nations. Now, can anyone listening to this show tell me that this is appropriate for the First Lady of the United States to be running around like a communist agitator on Indian reservations, stirring up the children? Tell me what good can come of it. I want to know. Let's ask the one question. Even if what she is saying is true about the distant past, does this help the children grow? Does this help the children make something of themselves? Or does this agitate the young Native American children into hatred? anger, rage, and hopelessness. What is she trying to do? You know what she's trying to do. In between her shopping trips to Paris and London and everywhere else on her jaunts around the world, this poor oppressed first lady of ours goes around and agitates minority children. Why? It's inappropriate, it's demeaning, and it's frightening that you put up with it. But of course, you didn't even know about it till I played it. Thankfully for you, I'm still allowed to find such things and show you what your first family is doing around the world. Michelle Obama, the tribal youth. You gotta listen to this again. You gotta listen to it again. They're talking about taking down the Confederate flag. I'm surprised that she hasn't yet lowered the American flag at the White House and raised the rainbow flag. They just about did it when they put the uh, rainbow lights all over the White House, embarrassing 98% of the American people. I've never seen anything like this, what they get away with. And yet his ratings are through the roof. Oh, yeah, Barry from Honolulu is doing very well. Barry's ratings are over 50 points. Now let's go to the uh, Marxist Pope. He uh, is overtly, he's out, he's out of the closet as a Marxist. I mean, there's everything the man says is out of Karl Marx's Das Kapital. Here are the seven most pungent quotes from the Pope's speech, courtesy of Daniel Burke at CNN. One, the system is intolerable. 
Farm workers find it intolerable. Laborers find it intolerable. Community find, communities find it intolerable. People find it intolerable. The earth itself finds it intolerable. That's your pope as he jumps onto the Vatican jet and dines like a pope around the world. Two, and behind all this pain, death, and destruction, there is the stench of what Basil of Caesarea, one of the church's first theologians, called the dung of the devil, an unfettered pursuit of money. That is the dung of the devil, said the pope. Well, there's a solution to that, Pope. Pope Francis, why don't you put your money where your big mouth is? And why don't you sell off the art of the Vatican to raise some money and give it away to the poor? And while you're at it, why don't you give up that Vatican jet of yours? And why don't you fly coach on American as you go around agitating uh, the poor of the world, Mr. Pope? Here we go to the next one right out of Das Kapital. Working for a just distribution of the fruits of the earth and human labor is not mere philanthropy. It is a moral obligation. For Christians, the responsibility is even greater. It is a commandment. Now, what does old Pope mean by the distribution of the fruits of the earth and human labor? What exactly does it mean by the just distribution? Does he mean what Karl Marx meant when he wrote exactly the same thing in different words? To each according to his means. Remember that one? Anybody remember that old statement by old Karl Marx, one of the Pope's teachers? Next one. In five, I humbly ask forgiveness not only for the offenses of the church itself, but also for crimes committed against the native peoples during the so-called conquest of America. This is your pope, another commie, agitating the poor. Here's the next one. Number six, the new colonialism takes on different faces. At times it appears as the anonymous influence of Maimon. Listen to this, corporations, loan agencies, free trade agent treaties, the imposition of measures of austerity, which always tighten the belt of workers and the poor. This is the Pope. He's basically telling the lazy citizens of Greece that they can continue to make believe that they're blind, deaf, and dumb to collect disability or not work at all and keep collecting money earned by the Germans and the French. I'll give you another one. The next quote from your Pope, the commie Pope, number seven. And I'm quoting now. If I were making this up, I'd lose my radio show. Did you hear what I just said? If I made up even one of these words, and I am quoting the, the Pope via Daniel Burke of CNN, here's number seven of your Pope. Quote, our common home is being pillaged, laid waste, and harmed with impunity. Cowardice in defending it is a grave sin. We see with growing disappointment how one international summit after another takes place without any significant result. What do you think he means by that? Well, he means all you good liberals should give up your houses to, to some poor minorities. In fact, you liberals listening to this show who agree with the Pope should put your money where your mouth is. What you should do is take a suitcase and fill it with uh, what possessions you may need, a toothbrush, crucifix, whatever you may need, Bible, and then take the keys to your house and see if you can find a copy of the deed. Go out to a construction site or a day laborer's meeting place and give your house away to the illegal aliens. Then you'll be practicing what you preach, won't you? I'm Michael Savage, and I stand by my words. 855-407-282, John on WABC. Go ahead, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, I just want to let you know that Michelle Obama's not doing anything wrong by telling... Oh, you're letting me know? You mean you're giving me your, fra your, your false opinion? She's, she's you're not telling me, you're not letting me know. You're giving me your commie opinion. Nothing communist, because the communists never never lied. It was the fascist Nazis who always lied and tried to have a revision. The communists never lied? Tell that to the 100 million people killed by communism in the last century. Didn't you read that in your college textbook? Go back and change history like the Nazis did. What did I just say to you? The communists killed, communism killed 100 million people in the last century. Are you aware of that or not? Yeah, but I'm not a historical revisionist. This is revisionism. Wait, wait, just stop changing the subject. How many Cambodians died under the communist Pol Pot? Nothing. He wasn't a communist. We, in fact, we supported him against the Vietnamese. Wait, but you're twisting the truth again. He was a communist. Do you know who Pol Pot was? He wasn't. We supported. I just asked you a question. Hey, stupid. Listen, if you're going to play stupid with me, I'm clicking the button and you're going back into cyberspace. Tell me who Pol Pot was. He was the head of the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia, who we supported against the Vietnamese. I didn't ask you who we supported. I asked you who he was. Do you know what, uh, uh, how he became a communist, yes or no? No. Well, I'm going to educate you, dummy. 
so you can take time out from your Occupy Wall Street uh, mimeographing. He was a college teacher who went to Paris to study Marxism. He came back to Cambodia and he introduced Marxism to Cambodia. Fast cut to three million human skulls. Do you remember that? The killing fields, yes. Oh, right, thanks for the call, you schmuck, you. Michelle Obama is doing the same thing that Pol Pot did, only she's doing it with words. And so is Barry from Honolulu. And so are the, uh, is the sorority around Barry from Honolulu. So Michelle Obama goes around and agitates minority children. What is she trying to do? What is she trying to achieve? What good can come of this? Even if there is a scintilla of truth in what she says, and no one will deny the horrors that were inflicted upon Native American peoples, no one will deny that. I'm a student of Native American culture. Remember who you're listening to. My first published book was in 1972, before you communist children were even born. And the book was called Earth Medicine, Earth Foods. It was in print for 25 years. So I know very much more than you may think about this subject. But my question is a little different. What in the world is she going to achieve by agitating Native American youth when she speaks about things like this? Why would she do this to them? How can she make them better citizens and more successful? This is the same problem that Jewish people have who harp on the Holocaust, which I object to. The Holocaust occurred, it was a horror. But if you're going to continue to teach Jewish children about the Holocaust as though that is the seminal thing in Judaism, then you're going to warp your child and make your child into a warped personality because it doesn't do that child any good. It's okay to know it happened and guard against it happening again. But you don't make that the seminal issue about being Jewish, and you don't make the crimes committed against Native Americans the seminal thing about Native, being a Native American. And if you do that, what you're doing is you're damaging the children. Do you get that? You're turning them into victims. You're warping them into not only tragic victims, but hateful tragic victims who walk around fearing everyone and hating everyone except people like themselves. Is that what you want to do? Is balkanize America, Michelle Obama? Of course that's what she wants to do. But there's more to the picture than that. When has she last gone to a white girl's school of the type that her daughters go to? You see, she sends her daughters to one of the most expensive private schools in Washington, D.C. I think one of them graduated or whatever. But she didn't send them to an inner city minority school. She, she protected her children from an inner city minority school. I think they went to a uh, very expensive private school in Washington, D.C. God bless them. Now, why would she do that and then talk down upon the culture at large? Because, as you well know, we are going through a Marxist revolution in the United States of America right in front of your eyes. It doesn't look like it. The economy is booming for the rich. Housing prices are off the charts. Uh, former slums in New York are now expensive in every way you can imagine. Garbage neighborhoods like those in Brooklyn are now uh, worth millions of dollars for an apartment. Why? The Lower East Side, where my father had a store in the slums, you can't find an apartment for less than a million dollars. The streets still look like garbage. The only difference is instead of being filled with immigrants, they're filled with white kids from the suburbs smoking cigarettes and growing their beard out. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So the first lady in between shopping trips around the world at government expense, meaning taxpayer expense, the junkets around the world with her daughters and her mother. Last trip she took, I think it was a shopping trip to Paris, wasn't it? Cost a fortune to buy herself some presents. Comes back and does community organizing. So now they're focusing on uh, Native American reservations. Uh, and so she speaks to the youth there. Now here's, here's something connected to this. Obama is going to Oklahoma next week. He'll be the first president in history, huh, what else is new, to visit a federal prison. The first sitting president to visit federal prison. My only hope is that they keep him there. But nevertheless, uh, if there was a 
penalty for breaking our borders, language, and culture. They would uh, invite him in and not let him out. Nevertheless, he's visiting a federal prison to agitate the uh, inmates, no doubt. Wait, it gets even better. He then is going to Durant, uh, Oklahoma, to visit the Choctaw Nation to make remarks and expand the economic opportunity. So why is B Barry and Michelle, what are they doing going to Native American reservations? They get out the vote campaign. They're doing community organizing. They know that the voter turnout is near zero on the reservations. And they figure, well, we got to get a vote wherever we can. So if it's amongst prisoners, wherever we find the votes, we're going to dig them up. That's as simple as that. In other words, they're doing community organizing while they're in office. Eugene on KUGN, and I guess it's Eugene, Oregon. Welcome to the program. You're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Michael. Yes, uh, I'm 25 years old. I go to college, and I, I cannot believe the stupid comments that you make. Now, why do you sound like you're, you're 125 with a voice like that? You're not 25. Sorry, as you call them. They would like to see the playing field a little bit more equal, and you capitalist ma madmen. Well, I don't understand. To the question I'm hanging up on you, do you own property, yes or no? It doesn't matter whether I own property. I'm telling you. Oh, in other words, you own property and you're a big liberal who wants everyone else to give something away. Why don't you give your property away, Mr. Eugene? I, I would rather than have you, someone like Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. You're another double-talking, fraudulent liberal. You want other people's money, you phony you. Go hide in that chimney. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. So they've banned the Confederate flag, the disinterring uh, Confederate uh, heroes, and not one word about the ongoing kidnaps, rapes, murders, uh, slavery being conducted by the black flag of ISIS. Meanwhile, Barack Obama in between fundraising and money raising. Meanwhile, the Pope, the communist Pope, goes around the world agitating the poor. And to what end? To what end will this phony Pope what end does he want? What does this phony pope want? If he hates the system and thinks it's inequitable and he wants fairness, the best thing is to act by example. And the most pronouncedly best thing the pope could do would be to stop flying around on a Vatican jet and fly coach on Alitalia. That would be the first step to stopping the pollution of the Vatican jet. Secondly, he could sell off some of the Vatican art. I hereby offer $1 million dollars for any Michelangelo that he may have in the Vatican. I'm, I'm going to live by that. A million dollars for any major Michelangelo in the Vatican. You know they're worth quite a bit more. Well, he could raise billions of dollars on the Vatican art, couldn't he? Then he could disperse it to Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Honduras, Mexico. He could do that. He could invite the poor to live in the Vatican, couldn't he? There's a lot of clean bedrooms in the Vatican that are unoccupied. And the Obamas, I've never seen anything like these two agitators. Why does she fly to England and go to a Muslim girls' school and agitate Muslim girls at a time like this? Why does he fly around and agitate people? Why does she fly to an American Indian reservation and agitate young American Indian children? What can come of it? Is it any good for them? Tell me, does it make them stronger to know about the injustices that were done to their ancestors 150 years ago or 120 years ago? Does it do them any good? You think they don't know that? And by the way, speaking of Native Americans and the injustices, wouldn't you say that the Indian gambling casinos are somewhat of a compensation since they function without paying any taxes? And I'll tell you something more, all you communists sitting in your stinking little houses up in Eugene, Oregon, telling everyone else how to live. Do you know how much money each Native American family makes off the casinos in that community? Do you, know, do you happen to know how much money is dispersed to Native American families as a result of the gambling and the no taxes? You don't know any of that. Didn't make it to MSNBC or, N or CNN, but I happen to know that. So what's the point? It's falling on deaf ears. The communists are getting worse. They're getting more militant. And they have two of the greatest allies in the history of communism functioning right out of the White House right now. 
and they have a, uh, an ally in the Vatican. It's a very dangerous time. Here's another news story. Georgia court will soon decide whether the Ku Klux Klan can adopt a highway. Now, I detest the Ku Klux Klan, but I think the safest way to prevent the Ku Klux Klan from agitating like this is to outlaw all white sheets south of the Mason-Dixon line. I hereby suggest that white sheets not be allowed to be sold south of the old Mason-Dixon line. That's the only way we can snuff out the Ku Klux Klan. Because if they have beige sheets or green sheets or pink sheets or red sheets, they're not going to wear them. They need clean white sheets. And I say that white sheets should not be sold south of the Mason-Dixon line. That'll be on the Limbo show Monday morning. I'm sure they wrote it down for him. 855-400-7282. To Steve on WFTL in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Steve, are you there? FTL. Hello? Steve is not there. Great. No. Okay, goodbye. Can you hear me? Yes. What's on your mind, Steve? Uh, uh, the American Indians are the most subsidized people, as you were saying, in the whole United States. So if, well, that's right. Yes. And so why is Michelle going around telling the young American Indians about the horrors that were done to their ancestors? What does she hope to achieve by that? Oh, absolutely. And by government subsidy and saying to treat them with more respect, meaning more government entitlements, if that's the case, just look, there, there's higher alcoholism, there's high heart, at heart, heart attacks, there's higher divorce rates, there's, there's uh, actually uh, health care that's free, and actually they have used their health care to a point where that they don't have it. In well, their it's, it's, a, it's a huge story, but the question really is, why is Michelle Obama going to Native American reservations and agitating the, the young children? What is she trying to achieve? I would think that it's, it's following in the lines of Solowinsky's plan to just cause... Thank you. It's community sure. organizing. It's a get-out-the-vote drive for the communist left. That's all it is. Create agitation, create resentment, create anger, create rage, and make them vote. Like, and if it's not enough, then burn a city down like they did in, in Baltimore. That's all. You know, if you want to make a, an omelet, you've got to break a few eggs. Like but you don't want to. But you don't want to start by breaking an egg in Eugene, Oregon, where all the commies hide behind their little houses. There, talk about inequity. I love that. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. All right, I got. Oh, I didn't give it away. Countdown to Mecca goes out to you, my great novel. I got to talk about this for a minute because this is starting to eat me alive. Uh, where is this one? I just got it from Jim, didn't I? Where they're talking about Ted Cruz's book. Ted Cruz. Here it is. A, commie, a, um, a socialist uh, front group, Politics, Politic US, USA, I think it's funded by uh, Soros, has a headline saying Ted Cruz busted for buying his own books as NY Times refuses to put him on bestseller list. And then they say that all Republicans get on the bestseller list by buying their own books. Now, that's a complete lie. Hillary Clinton bought her own books. And the New York Times is a Stalinist front group. It always has been. My novel, Countdown to Mecca, outsold three other books, and they refused to put it on their bestseller list, and I didn't buy one copy of my own. I'll go to a court of law, and I will testify to that effect, and I would demand that uh, the owner of the New York Times come forward and prove that anyone bought my book in bulk. Nobody did. This bestseller list establishes books that will be bought and sold in this country in many ways. And the reason that they didn't put Countdown to Mecca on the list was not because they found out that I bought my own books, because I certainly did not do that. And I swear on a stack of Bibles, and I would go before a court of law to prove that, I never bought even one copy of my own book. I beat three or four other books, including, by the way, some extremely well-known novelists. And the New York Times banished my book, Countdown to Mecca. They would not put it on, the, on their list. That was a huge story that World Net Daily covered, and it was, not, it was not picked up by Drudge. It was not picked up by anyone except by World Net Daily. But it's a true story. It's a very important story because now they're talking about Ted Cruz's book being banned by the New York Times. Well, I'm glad people are looking at the New York Times finally and seeing that the list is fraudulent. So you could say to me, well, if the list is fraudulent, why are you fighting so hard to be on it? It's because book buyers generally look add that as one of the most important indicators of which books will continue to sell. Do you understand that? 
And so I feel that you should know that my book, Countdown to Mecca, was not treated fairly. And I think that you should congratulate yourself for having bought the book, irrespective of that. Statistics don't lie. I outsold three other books, including one of America's best-known mystery writers or thriller writers. And I think that that had something to do with it. You can't have a conservative like Michael Savage publishing a novel that's a bestseller. Now, the first two in the series, Abuse of Power and A Time for War, did make the list. Now, all of a sudden, they decided they didn't want this one on it. It also has to do with the title Mecca, by the way. It's not just that it's me. It's that the cowards at the New York Times didn't want a book called Mecca, Countdown to Mecca, on their list. These jerks didn't even read the book. It's the opposite of what the frightful little communist knee jerkers thought it would be. So it's a good book. It's a great read. I hope you're enjoying it. And I recommend that you take a look at it if you haven't. It's an important book. 855-400-7282, KERN Radio. I love Kern County. Every time I drive to L.A., I go through Kern County down there before I get to the, uh, what is that called, Robert? With, you don't know California. Before you get to the uh, mountain that you drive over to, uh, to L.A., coming from the north. I always forget it. There's certain things I can't remember. That's like trying to remember William's name. Again, I can't remember his name. I have to say the comedian, Robin. Brian Williams. I have to go through. So in order to remember the name of that, when you go down Highway 5, before you go over that the mountain there, Kern, K-E-R-N Radio. I listen to you on the way to L.A. Bill, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Bill, are you there? Line 5. Hello? Yeah. Yes, Bill. Yes, Bill. What's on your mind, Bill? Yeah, I'm, I'm really getting worried about this Pope. You know, with the things that are going on today... It's like the last refuges, you know, they say, well, believe in God. You know, he, has, he knows how it's going to work out. Well, I can't even believe in the church anymore. I'm a lifetime Catholic. And this guy is going off on global warming, man-made. In those, uh, some of those comments he made down in South America, he's talking about, well, time's running out to save the planet. Well, right under this, there's another article that says even if the government's achieved their goals, they're not going to be able to stop it anyway. Now, well, first of all, it's all fraudulent science. I did a whole show on it. His advisor is a, a lifetime anti-God believer in Gaia. Did you know that? The man who wrote his encyclical on global warming is not even a, a believer in God. Did you know that? He believes well, in Gaia. He sounds like he doesn't believe in he, he God. Does, so the Pope is just reading a script given to him by a lifetime Marxist who isn't even a believer in the same God that the Pope, I hope, believes in. That's to start with. Secondly, this very same individual who wrote that encyclical against uh, mankind in the global warming lie refused to admit any scientist who had contrary evidence. It's very much like what they did to Galileo. This Pope is taking science back 500 years with his big lie about global warming. So you have to ask yourself a question. How do you continue to believe in God? The answer is simple. The Pope is a man. He's not God. He is just a man. Your religion is beautiful. God is beautiful. So you don't have to believe in the Pope to go into the church, do you? No, it just it just worries me the stuff they're gonna pass. it should it should worry you but you shouldn't let one flawed pope deter you from your worship of god in your house of worship i don't see that that's an incompatibility why can't you go into the church and conduct yourself in the beautiful rituals of your religion and worship god what do you care what the pope says well it's just kind of like we our leader has joined the other side kind of he thing. has joined the other side he's joined the dark side he has he's joined the devil that's right. The, the Pope has joined the devil. In fact, everything that the Pope is embracing is Marxist, which the, the church fought for a long period of time. Did you know that? You know that the church was anti-communist, right? Well, socialism has never worked, ever, in any country. No, let's forget that for a minute. The church conducted a war against communism for decades. So why is this Pope suddenly engaging in, in rhetoric of the Marxists. What happened to the church? How did it get how did it get hijacked like this is the question. To pray for the conversion of Russia. We used to pray for that back in the fifties and sixties and now Do you know why the church fought communism? It's because when the communists took over in Russia, do you know what they did to the churches in Russia? They killed priests, they burnt churches to the ground, they tried to snuff religion out. That's why the church is the natural enemy of communism. 
Now we wake up and we find the communist pope is a friend of Fidel Castro, as is your President Obama. He's suddenly a friend of every Marxist crackpot idea that has ever been put out there. But I say to you, that doesn't mean you should stop going to your church. I, I don't see why it would affect your worship. How does that affect your worship? Well, it's, I, can, I can talk to God right now. But it just, you know, it's just kind of like you have this institution and it's like rotting from the head down. And it's, it's heartbreaking. I can, hear, I can hear in your voice the sadness that, the, that the, the church would let this man run like a rogue like this through the, the church of Catholicism. But remember, the, tru the truth is the truth. And the lie is the lie. And if the Pope keeps espousing the lie, eventually the truth will win out. Give ear, you heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender grass, and as the showers upon the herb. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe the greatness unto our God. That is from Deuteronomy. Take faith, my friend. God sees the truth but waits. I'm Michael Savage, and I can't wait. I have to go to a commercial break. And I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. of you out there who believe in uh, alternative medicine. Cancer doc who gave chemo to healthy patients gets 45 years. You heard me. In order to bilk insurance companies, he was giving chemotherapy to healthy patients. That's Dr. Farid Fatah in Oak Park, Michigan. Calling this scheme horrific, a judge sentenced a Detroit area cancer doctor to 45 years in prison today for collecting millions from insurance companies while poisoning more than 500 patients through needless treatments that wrecked their health. The judge heard about brittle bones, fried organs, as patients chillingly described the effects of excessive chemo at the hands of Dr. Farid Fatah. The doctor repeatedly broke down in loud sobs as he begged for mercy. They all beg for mercy once they're caught. The corrupt doctor said, I misused my talents, yes, and permitted this sin to end me because of power and greed, said Fatah. My quest for power is self-destructive. He said his patients knocked on his door for compassionate care, but I failed. Yes, I failed. I wonder who wrote that garbage for him. I wonder the lawyer must have written for him. Outside the court, many former patients dressed in yellow in solidarity were disappointed with the punishment. They wanted more. They asked, what about all the grave markers? out there that all the victims' families have to look at. Liz Lupo held up a picture of her mother, Marianne Lupo, who died in 07 at age 62. She believes Doc Fata's treatments hastened her death. She said it's not justice at all. This piece of garbage I did it to 553 victims. Medicare and insurers paid at least $17 million. Did you hear this? His clinic, Michigan Hematology Oncology, had seven offices in the Detroit area. Did you believe this? Can you believe this is going on? Oh, by the way, you think he's the only one? The next time you have a doctor tell you, you 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 have cancer and you eat chemo, here's old Doc Savage's advice. Get a third opinion. Get a second and third opinion. And make sure the doctor was born in America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Run around. Yeah, All right, knock it off. I'm not in the mood. 
Here comes the pain. Here comes the pain. <laughs> oh, play Pacino again. It made me laugh. I want to hear it again. Here comes the pain. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Every time Michelle gives another agitating speech to minority youth or Obama uh, gives a speech or uh, I read you the news. Believe me, I give you the pain and I get the pain. But it's painful. It's a painful business. This is a tough business to be in. 855-407-282 is the Savage Nation. 855-400-SAVAGE. The website is michaelsavage.com. My latest best-selling novel is Countdown to Mecca. Put that into your pot pipes and smoke it. Because you're not on a bestseller list. I am. I've written 28 books, all you liberals. All you would-be writers. All you would-be writers sitting around thinking you're going to write the great American novel. I wrote three of them. You've wrote none of them. Because I'm a doer. You're a dyer. Karen on KKOB Radio. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Karen? Just made me love you even more. I discovered you about four months ago. And I listen to you every chance I can get because you make me laugh my head off, and I love that. That's but nice. what you see, my, <laughs> see, my pain my pain is what makes you laugh. I crucify myself every day on the radio, and you find it funny. Yes, I love it. I love <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It doesn't matter how much I bleed from the hands and feet. What's the difference? Exactly. You're right. Your pain is my game. I could not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can take it. I can take it. Obviously, I'm built for it. What else is on your mind, uh, other, other than your sadism? What else is on your mind, Karen? You just touched me so much. I'm a Catholic, and what you said to that Catholic man about going to church and don't worry about Pope Francis, oh, my gosh, you made me cry. That is well, that's right, because he's just a man. He's a flawed man. He's a propagandist for the, for the Marxist uh, viewpoint. That shouldn't deter you from your beautiful religion. Calling it beautiful. I just, oh my goodness, you are just a. It is a beautiful religion. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Catholic, but I do know something about many religions, and the rituals of Catholicism are beautiful. The churches are generally havens and real sanctuaries, and you should not let the uh, the the communist rhetoric of this pope deter you from going there to talk to God agree amen and the one thing i will say about this pope there's one word that you need to know about this pope he's a jesuit that's all you need to know i think jerry brown is as well by the way yeah exactly there you go there's another one yeah and the jesuits are are, are left-wing fanatics by and large they're marxists yes exactly there you go they used to be unbelievable men but then they went up to the dark side and that's all you need you to know, know. Uh, many people don't know the history of the wars between the Jesuits and the Franciscans. Are you aware of it at all? Yeah, a little bit. And people don't know that there were homicides and murders between these two groups. Uh, you know, see, a lot has been lost in, in history and in time. It's like when you say Buddhist, the image you have is of a peaceful person in a saffron robe who puts his hands or her hands between, you know, and bows in a quiet and this and that. But the Buddhists were quite warrior-like for a very long period of time. You should know that. And they are capable of defending themselves, incidentally. Yes, well, and you know what? The Jesuits used to be the Pope's men, and now they're, they're just... They well, I don't want to broad yes. brush the Jesuit movement. I would just say that this Pope, in my opinion, was handpicked by the same forces that are turning the entire world to the um, Bolshevik viewpoint, and it's a very dangerous time to be a hard-working citizen in the once free United States of America at a time like this. And this meddling pope will soon be in America, and the, the most embarrassing part of it is he has been invited to give a speech before uh, a Congress. In my Congress, this pope is going to speak. And I, wanted, I want you to think about that. Here is the Democrat Party, the most anti-God party the world has ever seen. They hate God. They have tried to drive God out of the classroom. They've tried to drive God out of the churches. These disgusting left-wing fanatics invited him to Congress, not for his message from God, but because of his message from Marx. That's all you have to know. Thanks for the call. I know everything.
Now let's go to line number two, Bob on WABC in New York. Bob, your point, please. Make it now in the Savage Nation. Michael, it is a pleasure, and you are uh, a kindred spirit. I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a conservative who didn't even know what the word meant when I graduated from college. Uh, uh, writing poetry since I was 17, went to Woodstock, born in 50. Uh, know the thing. I wanted to share a couple of things. Number one, the the idea of an elite calling the shots was made very known in a New York Times bestseller back in 1937 when Taylor Caldwell wrote Dynasty of Death that uh, basically described the rise of power of the DuPont munitions uh, fortune. And uh, now that's, you can connect some dots. The word got out about the fact that government was subordinate to these super-rich elites, um, the wealth of the industrialized nation. It all started after the end of the Napoleonic Wars, the balance of power, etc. No, but, but wait, let's slow down. Do, you, you're not arguing that the government should be uh, controlled by the street people, are you? <laughs> well, <laughs> see, be careful where your logic. Be careful where your logic leads you. Of course, politicians are puppets of the rich. They always have been. They always will be. The question is whether or not the rich of today have any noblesse oblige, any love for the nation. The answer is no. That's the problem. Where is a love for the nation? I don't care about rich or poor. I care about whether or not they want the nation to survive and thrive. And that's the problem. It's not whether the rich control the politicians. Of course, that's who puts them in power. How else are they going to function? The formula was very simple, too. The rich only had to buy up about 25 percent of the major newspapers to control public opinion. Uh, they started doing this about a little after the Civil War, and by the end of the 19th century, the well, ask you, was My friend, ask yourself why Warren Buffett bought up a bunch of newspapers, all of the small to mid-sized newspapers he can get his hands on, when he knows newspapers are a losing proposition. He wasn't buying them to make money. He was buying them to control the flow of information about himself and his uh, businesses. And the fact that although he tells everyone to pay more taxes, he pays as few taxes as he possibly can. And in order to stop the, uh, the Keystone XL pipeline, he put out the big lie that the pipeline would destroy the environment. But he didn't want anyone to know that it was because his railway was running the oil down from Alberta to the uh, from the Alberta tar sands to our refineries. He didn't want it to come by pipeline. I mean, that's why he wants to control the newspapers. Well, it was very discreet of the newspapers to sort of keep that detail out of things. But, but this, the point is, those who knew where, who just sort of kept their eyes open and their ears listening, knew to connect the dots. C.S. Lewis was telling this in his book, The Abolition of Man, which, he, he, which was based on three lectures at Duke University in 1950, and he turned that into his space trilogy, um, which, you know, basically showed that the... The uh, you know seizing technology, uh, control of wealth, etc., would be ultimately a spiritual crisis, and where the, the the world is headed for this one world government, one religion, world government, etc. It's it's spooky stuff, and and uh, and by the by, uh, I'm a well. So so you agree with me that the Pope was picked by the New World Order government? He was handpicked. Oh, absolutely. And I'm a cradle Catholic who actually went out into the Sierra Nevada mountains when I was 18 in order to really discover Christ alone in the wilderness. And I found my God not in the system, uh, but a personal love with my creator. And I can tell you... You know, I, I have to relate to that because I've done some spiritual things this week, make it simple. I never met my grandfather, the immigrant who brought, I call him the astronaut of the family. He came here, worked his heart out, died at 47, never met him. But he left a message to me through my father, who also died young, working too hard. I don't know how I go on, but he's, he said to me that your grandfather was not a religious man, but he believed in God. And he said that he could, he could meet God by putting his back to a tree and praying to him. I think that's what you just said. Uh, I what what I did was I had. I need to move along, unfortunately. I wish we could chat as though we were on peyote sitting on a mountaintop, but we cannot, and we have a lot to think about and a lot to say. But the time, my friend, is running away, and time is our best friend, and at the same time, it's our enemy. But remember, time is a sponge. It is really a sponge. That's all it is. 
It's a sponge of our ideas. One day I'd like to do a whole show on time. I've never lived the way I'm living now. Well, I have lived like this for 21 years, but do you know what it's like to live by the second, watching a second hand on a clock? Do you know what it's like to eat by a clock, to sleep by a clock, to breathe by a clock? That's what radio is. It's all about timing and nothing but timing. And having said that, I'm going to take a time out right now on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Since so many uh, former communists now believe in the Pope and in religion, since they're now embracing Christianity because of the Pope. What's, what's ironic to me is the very same atheist communists who hated religion, attacked the Catholic Church, are now suddenly uh, embracing the Catholic Church because of the commie Pope and his fraudulent missives, such as those on global warming, of which he knows nothing. The only thing the Pope knows about the weather is that when it rains, his minions hold umbrellas up for him. But having said that, I thought since so many young folks who were former, uh, formerly haters of religion now embrace Catholicism because of the Pope, I thought I'd actually teach you some religion. And so since it's Friday night, which is a very religious night for Jews, and I guess, uh, who else Friday night? Muslims, I think, have the same thing Friday night. They go into the Sabbath. Christians, of course, do it beginning Sunday. Isaiah is one of my favorite because in his day, he would have been a talk show host. If Isaiah had had a microphone and there had been any kind of media in his day, he wouldn't have had to carve it into a rock. He just would have gotten up, put on his pajamas and gone before his microphone. And he would have said things like this. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall oppose one another, oppress one another. Every man his fellow and every man his neighbor. The child shall behave insolently against the aged and the base against the honorable. For a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father. And let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer. For in my house is neither bread nor a mantle. You shall not make me a ruler of a people. And he goes on. And he goes on and says, as for my people, a babe is their master. Does that not sound like Obama and the sorority? Isaiah predicted it. As for my people, a babe is their master and women rule over them. Ooh. You know, I think that while they're burning the Confederate flag, they ought to consider burning the Old Testament because this is quite a sexist statement. In fact, the Old Testament is filled with homophobia. Uh, it's anti-woman, anti-gay. I think they should consider a book burning along with the Confederate flags. They ought to bury the, go into a synagogue and get out the Holy Scriptures and bury it with the Confederate flag because he said it, women rule over them and my people that they lead the cause to error and destroy the way of the path. You see that? And he said, why? It's because they, well, what's the difference? No one wants to hear any of this. No one cares about the Bible. They want the new Bible written by the radical feminists in the universities. The new Bible written by the feminists in the universities. That's the Bible that they want. Greece. Let's talk about Greece. Austerity, my eye. You're telling me they're going to give up one ounce of their largesse from Germany and France? Now, you know, when you read what the Pope said about austerity, you realize he's a communist just in that alone. The Pope, in his quote, in his speech, talked against demanding austerity. Did you know that? The imposition of measures of austerity, which he says always tightens the belt of workers and the poor. He says that's a form of new colonialism. Well, Mr. Pope Francis, can you please explain why 800 people on a small island in Greece of which the population is not much larger than 800 people have all declared they're 100% blind in order to connect, collect 100% uh, medical disability, Mr. Pope? You mean that is something that you agree with? I don't think so. Don't you think that's unfair to the citizens of Germany and France who pay their way? And don't you think that's unfair to the real blind uh, Pope Francis? Who is writing this stuff for this old man? And why is this old man just reading this communist garbage that's being put in front of his eyes. I did a whole show, I think, last week, a whole program with a legitimate climate scientist who exposed for you the fact that his encyclical on global warming was written by uh, a radical leftist who was 100% wrong. And I can prove he's wrong. 
he forbid anyone with evidence to the contrary from attending the conference on global warming or climate change, whatever they called it. That's not science. That's bigotry. That's dragging the church back to the age of Galileo. Do you understand this? He's dragging the church back to the 1500s. That's what this man is doing. 1500s with regard to false science and the early 1900s with regards to false economics. Because if he is going to preach Marxism, he should understand where it leads. It doesn't lead to a good place, Pope Francis, and all you Catholics should know that. That's it for the Savage Nation in this segment. The phone number is 855 400 I have no idea what austerity they're willing to accept in Greece. Do you? And the main problem in Greece is the people are lazy. They're very unproductive, and they have no export products. Because as I said yesterday, how much souvlaki can you sell to the world? How much baklava can the world consume? And until baklava becomes popular in China, I think Greece will continue to be poor. Nevertheless, tax hikes, cuts in pension spending are coming to Greece. Uh, yesterday or the other day, the Greeks voted overwhelmingly against it. But today there's a new proposal. As you well know, the EU blinked and the communists won in Greece because the people will get everything they want without working an extra hour a week and without cutting so much as a drachma from their pensions. They'll continue to spend, spend like the American welfare class. If you are shy, continue to listen to the Savage Nation. Your heart gets stopped. And where shall I begin? I don't know. I'll have to do it slowly. I'll have to do it slowly. The jumping on Trump, it's not new to me. Anyone in talk radio has had it done to them. It's cost me millions of dollars over 20 years what the advertising agencies have done to me as a result of boycotts based upon statements I really didn't even make. So don't think that it's uh, not, not affected those of us in the media who put ourselves out here every day for America. We do, and we've paid for it, and we keep on going. Because if we stop, who's going to be there for you? Tell me who's going to be there for you. Who? Who? Who's going to give your side of the story? Who's going to be left? I don't know. I don't know who's going to be left when guys like us are not in radio anymore. Who's going to be left when you have pancake made up guys like that Williams, the phony liar? That's that's who you get your news from to begin with. Only he got caught. That's all. He got caught. So they threw him out. It was too much for even for for NBC. We are in a gunfight and we're losing. The radical communist left has taken over the entire world. Now, I don't mean the old Bolshevik days where they lined people up and shot them quite yet. Notice the quite yet. No, it's a quiet Bolshevik revolution that Barry from Hawaii has been conducting. And the secret hands that run the world, who selected him twice now, controlling the voting, by the way, as uh, Joseph Stalin said, I don't care who counts. The, he says, I don't care who votes. I care who counts the votes. And you know who counts your votes, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're not counted in America. They're counted by a shadowy group in Europe that has some kind of computer program. If you can believe it, but it's true. Check it out. Then they picked the first non-European pope in 1,200 years who is, if he, if he was wearing a red beret, he would be no different than Che Guevara in his, in his rhetoric. But he, again, they're so clever, the communists, that they do it now in a different way, not yelling, not screaming, no hammer and sickle. They do it quietly. They're very good at salesmanship, the commies. So when a true conservative stands up like Trump, who really says what is apparently the truth, he never said all immigrants are criminals. He never said all Mexicans are criminals. Never. He never said that. He, you know what he said? The verminous communist left, instead of attacking ISIS for kidnapping, murdering, raping, selling young girls into slavery, they attack him. Instead of attacking the black flag of ISIS, the cowards in the Democrat Party and their media friends attack the Confederate flag. The cowards at the New York Times refused to list uh, Ted Cruz's book as a bestseller, even though it is, just as they did to me in Countdown to Mecca. I was shocked to see that article from Politico by uh, Dylan Byers. They said they, uh, although the uh, Ted Cruz's new book came out and it's outsold many other books, they would not list it, and they gave a twisted reason why at the New York Times. They alleged that many of his books were bought by groups, which is utter nonsense. My book, Countdown to Mecca, beat three other titles in total sales 
and they would not list that book. I want to go to my website, michaelsavage.com, take a look at the headline stories that I found worthy of publication. Vatican says the communist crucifix is a sign of dialogue, not ideology. See, he went to meet the Bolivian president, who was an avowed commie. And, of course, the Pope comes from a commie background. And the Pope was shocked, don't you know, shocked that he was given a crucifix in the form of a hammer and sickle. I don't know what it's going to take for you Catholic people to wake up to the fact that your church has been infiltrated and has overturned the whole meaning of religion. It is now a political organization with religious trappings. Here's a sad, heartbreaking story that I was reluctant to report, but I have to report it. A woman, 30 years old, was walking on Sunset Boulevard with her boyfriend. She was a waitress, a bartender, and she dreamed of becoming an actress and a writer in Hollywood. 30 years old, walking on Sunset Boulevard with a boyfriend when she was executed by an unknown assailant with a shotgun blast to the back of her head. Her name is Carrie Jean Melvin. Her boyfriend was not shot. No one else was shot. Melvin and her boyfriend, both originally from Central California, were strolling along McCadden Place near Sunset Boulevard, 10 p.m. Sunday, when a man, described by police as African-American and in his mid-20s, walked up behind Melvin and shot her once in the head before jumping into the driver's seat of a dark sedan. She was pronounced dead at the scene. There was no conversation before, during, or after the shooting, said Detective John Swags of the LAPD. The murder appeared to be random, said Swags. Although the targets, the killer's target was clear, there was no attempted robbery, and Melvin's boyfriend, whose name has not been released, was unharmed. Does anyone have any idea why a thing like this would happen? Here is another young white woman gunned down in the streets of California. And the national media is focused on the Confederate flag. The nation is very excited over the murder of the young lady in San Francisco by an illegal alien. They're excited by the lynch mobs that are now disinterring uh, Confederate generals, tearing down the Confederate flag. They are incensed by the degeneracy of the Oregon legislature that has said 15-year-olds can have their genitals mutilated or removed and get state-subsidized sex change operations without parental uh, knowledge. They are agitated by the fact that the vile MTV is now uh, shaming white people in a show called, I don't know, White Privilege or something, and it was produced by an illegal alien named Jose Vargas. They're incensed by the violence being perpetrated in this nation and that is being swept under the rug by the professional class of liars in the media. And of course, in the United States of America, we are still a free nation, despite what they think in San Francisco and Oregon. And we are free to think what we want to think and speak what we want to speak. And remember this, the best defense is the truth. Ask any attorney. The best defense for anything you may say is the truth. So I would say arm yourself with the facts and don't be intimidated by the left. They're not as strong as you may think they are. In fact, they usually run away. When you, when you encourage the truth and speak it, they usually scurry away. I saw it on a YouTube when a reporter asked this guy Campos, one of the supervisors from San Francisco, about the murder in San Francisco or near Fisherman's Wharf, he said, uh, don't you think the sanctuary city had something to do with it? And the guy said, no, I believe in the sanctuary city. He said, the person responsible is the man who did it. And the reporter immediately said to him, but he wouldn't have been here if you didn't have a sanctuary city. And Campos scurried away like the uh, little mouse he really is. When confronted with the truth, they don't have an answer. They hide. They run away behind curtains, you see. So let's move on to something else. We all know sanctuary cities are a sanctuary for more than just hard workers. And look, let, let's be clear. Let's be very clear. Most immigrants that I've seen work very hard. I mean, let's not mince words. I'm not blind. I'm the son of an immigrant, so I look carefully. I see myself. I see my father in them. I speak the language to a certain extent, so I understand very well what's going on. I know who makes my food, who serves my food. I know who cuts the lawn. I know who builds the house. I get it. I'm not blind. I understand all of that. But unfortunately, there is some spillover. And the spillover is what we are talking about. And a sanctuary city does not help us protect ourselves from criminals. In fact, it encourages bad people to come here which is why whatever this guy was from, Texas, they say, came uh, 
love to come back to San Francisco. He knew he wouldn't be deported. We need strong deportation laws for criminals. We need to clean out the prison population. You know, you want to talk about immigration reform? Let's talk about it. Let us start with the obvious. Tell me who would argue with this. You start by saying we need immigration reform. What does that mean? Put a wall on the border with Mexico like the Israelis did with the Palestinians. You say, whoa, that's, man, that's racist. Well, actually, the reason the Israelis built it is because their children were being blown up in cafes in Tel Aviv. And despite what the liberal idiots in, in Israel said to them, and despite what the vermin at the EU said to them, they went ahead and they built a wall in Israel. And guess what? I haven't seen a suicide bombing in Israel since. They locked them out. They can't come in. They want to cross into Israel for work. They go through checkpoints. We need a wall, a real solid wall. And I have the data in front of me. It's a rather uncomfortable data on this racial breakdown that you may not want to hear. You want to read some of it? Ten most startling facts about people of color and criminal justice in the United States. Ooh, that's a bad one. That's a bad one. You don't want to hear the data. I won't read it to you. I know you're going to say it's all racism because that's what you've been brainwashed into believing. But tell that to the victims of crime. Ask them if it's all racism, if they've been raped or held up at gunpoint or had a home invasion. Ask them about that and see if it's all about racism. See if the poor people who were captured after doing the crime uh, were really innocent. That's all. But uh, you don't want to hear the truth. We're, we're, not, we're not interested in the truth. We become South Africa. Under Barry from Hawaii, the country is moving rapidly into South Africa's history, which is a nightmare. Because if you think that there's going to be justice, you're mistaken. There'll be no justice. There'll be nothing but blind justice and lynch mobs. What would you like to talk about? Can we move on to something positive? No, it's impossible. It's imp I've tried to make it a positive show. I wanted to talk about fish oils and uh, the, the, the attack on, on supplements. It's impossible to do anything positive now in America uh, in the media. Remember I tried it for a few days? It's impossible. I can't do it. You don't want anything positive. Why? Because your, your guts are on fire from what's being done to you by Barry from Hawaii and his minions, his sorority. What more do you need to know? Let's put it in context. You have... A band of radical Muslims in ISIS who are flying a black flag that stands for raping, murdering, killing, setting people on fire while they're alive. And this country, instead of unifying in their opposition to these vermin, these subhumans, instead we're arguing over a Confederate flag. Now, what does that tell you? It tells you that we have an idiotic president, an idiotic media, and a people divided. This program, although it emanates from San Francisco, is now heard on over 250 great stations. I know that in San Francisco they like to believe I don't exist, but I've been here for 21 years on the radio, longer than most of the supervisors put together. In fact, if you put them all together, I've been on the radio longer than they've all served if you add them all together. I know San Francisco better than they do, and I know what the people really think, and I know how they feel about this illegitimate government that is running roughshod over the voters. I know how they feel in America as well, because I, Michael Savage, have probably the most accurate stethoscope of anyone in the media. I know what the heartbeat of America really sounds like. And uh, on that note, I'll take a quick break, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So now we move on to the constant agitation by the president and the first lady. She gave a speech to young American Indians, I guess they call Native Americans, where she agitates minority youth with the following speech in clip four. Let's listen. Before the United States was even an idea, your ancestors we're harvesting the crops that would feed the world for centuries to come. Your artwork has inspired generations of artists. Your healing techniques have spurred great medical advances and saved countless lives. And today on issues like conservation and climate change, we are finally beginning to embrace the wisdom of your ancestors. Why is Michelle Obama agitating minority youth around the world? 
she went to London. She went to a Muslim girls' school, and she said, you look like me, I look like you. She told them how wonderful they were. Wherever she goes, she seems to be agitating. I can see inspiring minority youth, but it's one thing to inspire people with the truth. It's another thing to agitate them into anger. Listen to clip five and tell me if you think this is appropriate for a first lady. Five. As we all know, America hasn't always treated your people and your heritage with dignity and respect. Oh. Tragically, it's been just the opposite. Oh, my God. Your traditions were systematically targeted for destruction. Can you believe your this? Your people were forced to relocate far from the lands they lived on for generations. Young people just like you were sent to boarding schools designed to strip them of their language, culture, and history. Well, listen to this. This is the first lady of the United States who is speaking just like a left-wing college professor trying to agitate minority youth against white people. And notice that she's talking about the Native Americans' language, culture, and history. God, if she only cared about America's borders, language, and culture. Then I would call her a first lady. Now let's go to the uh, Marxist Pope. He uh, is overtly, he's out, of, he's out of the closet as a Marxist. I mean, there's everything the man says is out of Karl Marx's Das Kapital. Here are the seven most pungent quotes from the Pope's speech, courtesy of Daniel Burke at CNN. One, the system is intolerable. Farm workers find it intolerable. Laborers find it intolerable. Communities find it intolerable. People find it intolerable. The earth itself finds it intolerable. That's your Pope as he jumps onto the Vatican jet and dines like a Pope around the world. Two, and behind all this pain, death, and destruction, there is the stench of what Basil of Caesarea, one of the church's first theologians, called the dung of the devil, an unfettered pursuit of money. That is the dung of the devil, said the Pope. Well, there's a solution to that, Pope. Pope Francis, why don't you put your money where your big mouth is? And why don't you sell off the art of the Vatican to raise some money and give it away to the poor? And while you're at it, why don't you give up that Vatican jet of yours? And why don't you fly coach on American as you go around agitating the poor of the world, Mr. Pope? Here we go to the next one, right out of Das Kapital. Working for a just distribution of the fruits of the earth and human labor is not mere philanthropy. It is a moral obligation. For Christians, the responsibility is even greater. It is a commandment. Now, what does the old Pope mean by the distribution of the fruits of the earth and human labor? What exactly does it mean by the just distribution? Does he mean what Karl Marx meant when he wrote exactly the same thing in different words? To each according to his means. Remember that one? Anybody remember that old statement by old Karl Marx, one of the Pope's teachers? Next one. In five, I humbly ask forgiveness not only for the offenses of the church itself, but also for crimes committed against the native peoples during the so-called conquest of America. This is your Pope, another commie, agitating the poor. Here's the next one. Number six, the new colonialism takes on different faces. At times it appears as the anonymous influence of Maimon. Listen to this, corporations, loan agencies, free trade agent treaties, the imposition of measures of austerity, which always tighten the belt of workers and the poor. This is the Pope. He's basically telling the lazy citizens of Greece that they can continue to make believe that they're blind, deaf, and dumb to collect disability or not work at all and keep collecting money earned by the Germans and the French. I'll give you another one. The next quote from your Pope, the commie Pope. Here's number seven of your Pope. Quote, our common home is being pillaged, laid waste and harmed with impunity. Cowardice in defending it is a grave sin. We see with growing disappointment how one international summit after another takes place without any significant result. What do you think he means by that? Well, he means all you good liberals should give up your houses to, to some poor minorities. I'm Michael Savage, and I stand by my words. Savage.